Welcome to the Disconnection Podcast. My name is Kyle Nielsen, and I'm here with Ben Harmadi, and we're your hosts for today's show. During this episode at Disconnection, we'll be speaking to Stephanie Eisner. Hey. Hey, well, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad Absolutely. to have you here. Yeah, very happy to have you here. So for everyone listening, Stephanie is my cousin. So, uh, Stephanie, what do you do for work? I work for PricewaterhouseCoopers. I'm in the marketing and sales department, and my title is client strategist. So um, I would basically say, in a nutshell, I'm a coach. So I coach people on um, communication, on, you know, uh, we deal with requests for proposals. I deal with a lot of teams, kind of project management, strategy, um, yeah, communication. <laughs> cool. Would you say that you've always been a good communicator? No, I was a terrible communicator. <laughs> Why do you think that was? Well, and let's talk about you as uh, you know a kid, right? Yeah. Where do you think that your want to communicate came in? Um. Well, <laughs> so I feel like I've had uh, nine lives. <laughs> okay. I have had um, several different work lives. Um. You know, kid life, and then at thirty, I feel like I had this whole new life that started um, because of the communication skills that I got. Like as a kid, mm -hmm. I was always um, directed by my dad to, you know, do this and say this. And and he, he really had some great ideas. I don't know if he communicated them in such a way that I could hear it. Right, right. Um, and at 30, all of a sudden, I started hearing it from other people. Mm -hmm. um, and conversations with my dad were like, well, I told you this. <laughs> I've been telling you this your whole life. Yeah, dad, but I couldn't hear you. So, yeah, it, it, communication was um, something that evolved uh, after 30. Uh, what were some of the jobs that you felt you learned the most from, right? Because you didn't just become a strategist and a, a coach, <laughs> no, a communications coach by just like, oh, yeah, let me go get a job there. Like, <laughs> how, do, how, do you, how do you learn from the steps that you've taken? So it's interesting. Um, I initially... Um, became a cosmetologist. I went to beauty school mm. and I worked in a salon for a couple of years. Found out it wasn't really my cup of tea. I didn't like the whole uh, girls club, <laughs> so right, to speak. Right. I'm more of a, I, I like being in corporate America. I really do. Um, and I think I function well in it. So after cosmetology, I, um, I knew I needed to really make more money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to my cousin and I said can I be a receptionist mm. and that evolved into an executive assistant position so I did that for about 15 years um, and I actually was an executive assistant for PricewaterhouseCoopers until um, getting basically recruited into the into the marketing and sales department wow there's this book that I'm uh, in the middle of reading it's called blame in the workplace I hope I'm saying that title right um, and it's about uh, making teams work more efficiently together as well as um, taking responsibility for uh, your part in a project, let's say project management, whatever it might be. Um, and it was written by a, oh man, what's his, uh, his official title? Industrial Organizational Psychologist, which is what I wanted to study mm -hmm. and wanted to become. And I happened to meet him, long story short, um, through a project that I was doing, but uh, is that kind of along the lines, right? You, yeah, you know? 100 percent. So as a strategy, you you have to know how to speak to people in mm -hmm. order to have a certain result. And it's not really it's uh, different than a manipulation, right, but more right. different communication styles require different uh, types of communication. Sure. And if you are not getting the result that's desired, you need to change your communication or it's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Right. Is there totally. like an example you can kind of give us of like trying to communicate something to somebody in the workplace in one way where, you know, another way would be a lot more successful? Yeah. I mean, so um, I deal with every type of employee from um, intern to partner level. Um, and some of the partners that I deal with are on the board of directors. I mean, you know, pretty high up big wigs. Mm -hmm. So the way that I would speak to an intern would be vastly different than the way that I would speak to a partner or somebody on the board. Um, and it's not really a difference of respect because there's always an element of respect there. But for instance, a partner may need way less communication um, and description than an intern would. An intern, you, you might need to handhold a little bit, right. walk them through A, B, and C, 
And uh, whereas a partner, you want to just cut to the chase. You want to start with the end and let them ask questions. Mm. That gotcha. makes sense, yeah. especially because they're more uh, accomplishment oriented. Is that the right way to phrase that? Or um, mission oriented? Right where I they I don't know I don't know if they're accomplishment accomplishment oriented, um, but they don't have any time. Especially right, right, working right. for Price Waterhouse Coopers, which is one of the big four accounting firms mm. in the world. So um, when you're dealing with people that don't have enough time, you have to cut to the chase, mm. give them only the information they need, and and let them pull more. Um, whereas an intern, you would start from the beginning, walk them through the middle, and then you know end it. You know, so they could see where it um, where it should go. Right. And how did you transition from an executive assistant there to your position currently? So I worked for a regional business development leader in the organization. So we already were working on some presentations, some uh, you know requests for proposal material, uh, some marketing material, obviously, and. Um, the, the group liked my work. They liked that I was a yes. That was one of the, the things that they said. A yes? I was a yes. What is a yes? So being a yes is not being a no. <laughs> 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 there are some, um, sometimes in, in the workplace, it's really easy to say, I don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. I, um, I'm really busy or I'll get to that soon. These are all no kind of answers. Sure. And being a yes, I didn't always know how I was going to fulfill on what I was saying yes to. Mm. It was kind of like that throw your hat over the fence and then figure out how to get it later. So being a yes in the workplace looked like uh, I'm right on top of that, Rose. You ever see uh, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter is Dead? I haven't, but I got you. It's, a, it's an 80s movie, and she, and no matter what is happening in the workplace, she goes, I'm right on top of it. I'm right <laughs> on top. So just, just um, taking that work that the partner is giving you and saying, oh, I was just about to work on that. Yep, um, um, I'm uh, in the middle of that. Gives them a sense of, and, and the feedback that I got was, I'm important. You tell me that I'm important every day by saying I was just working on what you gave me. So being that kind of attitude um, paved the way for a new kind of position and a promotion within the firm. That's beautiful. Thanks. You didn't receive that promotion immediately though, right? Didn't at one point? You know, I didn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So I was a, I was a fixed term employee, which means on a contract. Mm. So I had, you know, six, seven months to find another position. So I did go into another executive assist, uh, position and, and um, ended up working at a, different, at a different location for PwC and then came back. It takes guts to do that, to, <laughs> to have something that is, um, we'll call it secure, right? Yeah. And, and to be like, okay, hold on a second. You know, I, I need to do what's right for me. Yeah, it, it was a really fun transition. I love my job. I love my position. I love the kind of work that I'm doing and the kind of people that I get to interact with. Um, and had I known that this is what I wanted to do when I was 18, oh my God, I I would have been <laughs> streamlining in in that direction. Um, but I guess, you know, you don't really know these things until you come across them and you figure right. them out. So. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, right, right. But at the same time, I look at these kids who come in as interns and I'm like, God, you're so lucky. You know exactly what you want to do. This is amazing. But they don't always, right? Because you they constantly don't. change. They could be there for a couple of years and then say, you know what? This isn't for me. I want to go. And that's part of being human, right? That's yeah. that's okay. That's uh, figuring out life as it happens. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But I think it's tough for everybody to like know their path right away. I mean, that's definitely not a usual thing, but people right, are definitely right. people definitely come out of college with a set path, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I didn't or they think they do. So much. Yeah, or they yeah. think they do, but then they find out they don't like it just as you said. Yeah, yeah. And they switch around a little bit. What I was going to say, when you said you were a contractor, it initially made me think like I've been a cr- contractor for a few months now for a company and uh be it's weird. Like it's not that I'm not don't have good work ethic and but mm-hmm. I can see myself sometimes maybe not being a total yes at when I'm in a full-time position. It happens. Same, but as same. a contractor, I feel more inclined to be more 
yes like like mm -hmm. i think i was significantly more yes like in this past position just because you know it's like limited you know that you might not stay here you, it's kind of more up in the air than normal things so you want to kind of show that you are on top of it as much as possible and do you think that kind of had an effect on you as well like that interesting that i mean uncertainty yeah actually i i want to ask you do you see a sure. different result of being a yes um, in a contract position I had a more work come towards me. Yeah, yeah well, so that I was mean, good. unfortunately, that's a good thing in corporate America when you sure. get more work. <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. When you're, when you're good, you get more work. That's oh, how it man. works. So if you're getting more work, you're good. <laughs> it's, it's true. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It was nice. Um, so I wanted to speak. Kyle told me that you did Landmark Form. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Yeah. yeah. How'd, how'd you get introduced to it? Ah, I was a total no. <laughs> That's how I got introduced. Um, my aunt and uncle did it. Oh, can I ask you first, yeah. at what part, uh, like where in your career is this? What part in your life? Before you were 30? Oh, that was the 30 mark. That gotcha. was the 30 mark, yeah. Gotcha. Um, <clears throat> I had actually just turned 30 years old. I got introduced to the Landmark Forum, which um, Landmark's programs, they, ha they have a whole uh, curriculum of programs um, you could really do their programs for the rest of your life if you wanted to, or you could mm. just do one. Um, <clears throat> how I was introduced was my aunt and uncle did it, and they invited us to their final session, which was their completion session, where you can have you know any kind of guests you want, uh, people who have taken the forum, people who have not taken the forum. And I really didn't want to go. <laughs> Sorry to my aunt, but um, I, I really didn't want to go. And my dad said, we're going. We're going to support your aunt, and you don't have to do anything. Just show up. So we walked in, and my aunt and uncle were holding hands, which was just – it. they didn't not love each other. It just wasn't normal. Um, and they were being really loving towards each other. And they let us be whatever way we wanted to be. So what does that mean? That means – when we walked in, I said, I don't want to be here. And my aunt turned around and said, yeah, OK, whatever you want. And I took a second because my aunt was normally not like that. She, you know, loved everybody having fun and needs everybody to have fun. And so to that end, she, she, would, she would make you be a certain way. No, you have to be here and you have to be fun and you, and you have to be smiling. She was just like, OK. You could be whatever way. So that was the first thing that I saw. I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. I don't know what this program did to you, but <laughs> it's kind of tolerable. So that's OK. Um, so then we sat down, and a couple of people had a convers you know, couple of conversations with me. And they kept asking me what I wanted, and I started to cry. Now, I wasn't aware of it at the moment. But what I didn't want to say was what I really wanted because I didn't think it was possible. And it still makes me get emotional because I didn't, I didn't think I could say what I wanted and make it possible if it wasn't. So. What, what was it that you wanted? To be in the relationship of my dreams. Okay. To have a relationship where I was the most important thing to him and he was the most important thing to me. And were you in a relationship at that point, or you were looking for a relationship, you're saying? Um, I had just ended a relationship, and I had a series of bad relationships that, you know, two, three months relationships that I thought were the one. Um, and it, it, in hindsight now, I look back and I go, oh, my God, that was like not even... Not even close. Not even close. So you wanted to be wanted. Yeah, I really wanted it to be in a in a juicy, delicious partnership, relationship where both of us mattered and both of us tried and, you know, really cared about one another. And I never experienced that up until that point. Okay. I follow. So uh, you broke down. At, I broke down. Yeah. <clears throat> My dad asked me um, if I wanted to do the Landmark Forum and I said, this, like, do you don't think it's a gimmick? You don't think, like, they're just going to take my money? Because I was completely skeptical. I'm like, they're going to take my money. They're, <laughs> they, you know, it's it's not going to work. How do I know? And my dad, who I have valued his opinion my entire life, mm -hmm. said, no, I don't think it's a gimmick. I think it actually work. And I said, what do you think I'd get out of it? And he said, confidence. Mm. And I really thought I had confidence. I had self-assurance. 
But that inner confidence was really not there. And I would have, I would have disagreed with you. I yeah. would have said you are confident. Because on the outside I was. Mm. I had everybody thinking that what you saw was completely put together. And then what my dad saw was I would just break down on the inside. I, I didn't have that confidence to, to say to a guy, you know what, you're not treating me right. I'm out. Right. So I just want to go back a little bit. What was like the context of you breaking down and crying exactly in this form? Your family was all asking you questions or? Or was it the other people? Yeah, it was other people coming mm -hmm. around going, hey, what do you want? You can have anything you want for yourself and your life. That sounds like what do you want? drink the Kool-Aid, like, right? I don't want, no. <laughs> like, <I'm> just, <laughs> you could have I, anything. I couldn't, um, I don't think I had the words to actually communicate what I wanted. I'll say, I like, I'll say this. I've been to a landmark graduation mm -hmm. and it it felt it was an uncomfortable experience for me honestly I know my my friend Leo he was really into the form and he was so excited about it so he invited us and he kept telling me I want you to sign up for this I want you to join us and uh, you should just check this out and I wasn't interested in that it just wasn't for me but I was there to support my friend I was gladly I he was in a darker place then and he needed mm -hmm. an uplifting and this seemed like it was helping him in his in his own way which made me happy for him you know but I'd gotten to the form and I got a very uncomfortable vibe after they had kind of done the initial ceremony. They had people coming around and uh, there was a woman, her, her face like was very disfigured and uh, she came over to me, my friend Sarah, started telling me her story, like what happened to her. It was all like very, like she, I didn't like, you know what I mean? I wasn't like asking her questions. She just came and kind of told me her her life story and it was like this really really sad story me and my friend are like sitting there crying for her because oh it's like this terrible tale and like at the end of the story we're like in tears there and she's like yeah and it's only five hundred dollars if you want to sign up and me and her were immediately like whoa <laughs> like that took us back it was like it was like what you're soliciting us for money after kind of like emotionally like wrecking us there and that gave me a like very bad taste in my mouth about about the whole thing and I wasn't interested and I said I said no and she like kept being kind of pushy about it mm. and uh, she kind of didn't let go until I was like I literally don't have five hundred dollars to pay for this program and then she like got off me and uh, I did I don't know if that's like speaking for all landmark form but like that was kind of the vibe I got from that do, do, do you feel like you you see some of that when you're when you were there at the graduation I mean that like, that's really it seemed like a tactic almost you know what I mean that's, that's why really was, unique yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you and I'm so sorry that you had that experience it was uncomfortable honestly that, yeah, yeah I I would have been uncomfortable too yeah. and, and I've got lots of communication tools <laughs> sure <laughs> that um no, that's not what Landmark promotes. Um, but people do have the experience after doing the Landmark Forum of being able to share w with anybody um, and to be able to share about anything that they're dealing with. Um, they experience freedom, self-expression, peace of mind. People experience these ways of being um, and then they take certain actions, but we're still all human. Right. So we're going to do what our what our go to reaction is. And I, I don't know in this person's case, but if that was their go to reaction of how they've uh, lived their entire life, which unfortunately somebody who's um, dealing with a disfigurement is is probably dealing with something deeper than oh. can be dealt with at Landmark. Um so, I mean, I don't know, therapy and other stuff. Like, right. Landmark is not a replacement for therapy. It is not therapy. It's a, it's a bunch of ideas, a bunch of tools that have been put together so that people can live what's called a created life. And that what you, is that? The, that you have the power and the responsibility, mm -hmm. right, because they go one in the same, to live what's called a created life. So a created life meaning... I wanted the relationship of my dreams. That's my own creation. I'm now in a in a three year relationship with the man of my dreams, who I live with, and we have a quote unquote kid, right. <laughs> who's a four pound Yorkie. I was gonna ask about <laughs> <a> dog. <laughs> I like to quote unquote <laughs> so that you know, four pound adorable Yorkie, who's our son, um, and that never would have been possible with my ways of thinking, being, and acting before I had Landmark's tools. 
Well, I think that's, I mean, it's very positive and I'd have nothing against anybody who can yeah. find something positive out of this. It's, it's a wonderful thing, but just to like, I, I my bad experiences kept <laughs> rolling with this, unfortunately. My friend Leo, he came out, he actually became a little estranged for a while. And one, one day he called me up and he was like apologizing for all these things in the past. It almost sounded like what kind of post AA meeting sort of mm. apologies. And that was fine, and like we had a nice big heart to heart. And a few months later, he called me up and he told me he didn't want to be my friend anymore. Oh, and he, yeah. I, like, it all seemed related. And I was like, w- why? And he didn't really give me a reason. He kind of cut me off for a little bit. And then like months later, he like was kind of out of the landmark, and like we picked it back up. Yeah. And it was fine. But like, what kind of stuff is like? Are they teaching there where it can get to a point where he's my best friend? We were in a band together. We grew up together. That he would tell me he would try cut me out of his life. Like, I, I don't understand like what the process is for him to go from A to B there. Did you ask him? I I didn't. We honestly didn't really even speak about. I I kind of I didn't want to bring it up again after yeah. a while. We kind of just picked it up and like I pretended like nothing happened because I just wanted to be with my friend Leo again. You know. Yeah, of course. And you I didn't, probably missed him and missed the friendship. And... Yeah, of course. I I also didn't want to him to feel that I want was like talking trash about what made him happy and the the program that he went through to you know help him continue on with his life and make the choices that he was making. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to destroy that part for him yeah, at all. You know. But I, I, I just don't understand how it could have gone into that level. And yeah. like, like what's well, my question is really what's being taught there that could even take him to say that to me at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, I, I've I've never taken any any of Landmark's tools and used them to cut people out of my life. Mm-hmm. I've only used the tools to reconnect relationships, to mend broken ones. For example, my mother. Um, my mother and I had a decent relationship, but in my opinion, after taking Landmark, it wasn't um, authentic. And so people have the experience after taking Landmark that they're not being authentic, basically true to their 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 real self. Um, and I had the experience where I wasn't being authentic to my mother, and I told her. And that really hurt because it's like, here's these 30 years of my life where I'm not, I'm, I've just told you for 30 years, I'm, I haven't been real to you. I've been being fake with you. I've been tolerating you. And maybe it's not 30. Maybe, maybe it happened around 13, 14, you know, you go through those teenage years. Sure. And, but I I hadn't been being real to her. But when I told her, I also then said, and now, because I see that, I am going to be the best daughter to you ever. And I've taken actions consistent with that. We hang out together. We, we see movies together. Um, we just went and got our makeup done together. So we have these experiences together. And I'm able to say in those moments, maybe being um, upset at this one thing that you did or, or you being upset at me, maybe that's not what's important in, in my life. Maybe what's important in my life is you being in my life. Sure, and I think it's a, that sounds like a great way to mend the relationship. I'm, I'm curious what her initial reaction was to that. when you She cried. Yeah. <laughs> she cried a lot. Um, so initially, she apologized. Interesting. You know, we all had a really um, tough... You know, my, my parents didn't make a lot of money and, you know, we had a couple of things, ha- you know, an accident and, and things happened where they did the best that they could. But at the same time, you know, growing up that way, when that's all you know, you start thinking things about your your upbringing, right? So what I did was when when I said to her, you know, I haven't really been being authentic with you. Her response was, oh, God, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. And I actually had to stop her and say, no, 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 no. I'm trying to apologize here. You don't get to apologize. (laughs) It's not your fault. And I took all responsibility off of her, and she didn't know what to say. 
Um, and I did the same thing with my father after taking the Landmark Forum. It was actually at the Landmark Forum. It's one of the exercises mm-hmm. you go and you you uh, reconnect with people, which is probably why Leo connected with you. You know, there's probably some un, undelivered communication. And I'm sure he didn't know how to deliver that communication, which is why years later now you're talking again. My advice to you um, as a friend, as a coach, would be to ask him now that you guys are talking again, ask him what it actually was that made him say he didn't want to talk to you anymore after going through Landmark's programs and see what he says. He may not have the language to say what he was feeling and dealing with, but if you give him the space and show him that you're open to hearing it and you're not going to judge it in any way or make it wrong, he'll he'll probably tell you. I, I think he would too. And you know, that that really could be a conversation that we should be having together. Like I don't disagree with that at all. <laughs> I'm just uh, like, I want to know, you say Landmark gives you all these tools. Mm-hmm. What are the other tools? Like, how did you find, what was the difference that was made that helped you find the relationship you're currently in? Like, mm-hmm. how did you, what, what were the conversations that were had that made you feel a shift into how you were dealing with your boyfriends or partners or, you know, whatever you'd want to call them? It's, uh, wow, it's a long conversation. (laughs) I will try and um, shorten it. The way that the Landmark Forum works is there's a sort of a coach, a leader, that stands in the front of the room. Their training is extensive. They train anywhere between seven and 10 years to be a Landmark Forum leader. There's only 50 of them in the world. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, they're located in over 50 countries. So you can imagine they're all doing double and triple and quadruple time. Um, They are extraordinary human beings who are able to listen for um, and then reliably deliver that which really makes a difference to what people are dealing with and what they really care about. So you have anywhere between 150 to 200 people um, in a room, and that's in New York City, and that's one of the largest forums that they have. there are other countries that do smaller forms, but that's kind of, that's kind of, you know, 100, 150 people. And the way that it works is people get up and share about what they're dealing with. Now, that could be a relationship. That could be a, a mom or dad relationship. It could be uh, romantic. It could be jobs, um, wealth creation, you know, whatever. They get up and they share about their situation. And they get coached in front of the room. Now, nobody has to get up and share But it's through these volunteers that get up and share um, that people sitting in their seats, um, they listen through a filter. And you listen through the filter of how does that apply to me? How does that um, correlate in my life? So it's kind of like therapy in front of a crowd almost? Eh, So not really because therapy – I could see how you could make that connection because it's it's. Well, you said he was being coached in front of a group of people. Therapy usually is talking about the past. As a, and what is this? I thought you were speaking about past problems kind of, right? So in Landmark, you, you bring in your past, right? So like as a human being, we all have past experiences that we've had, right? So that they stay with us. So you walk into the Landmark form with your past. Okay. But you also leave it at the door. And it, again, it's very hard to explain. Um, but after people finish the Landmark Forum, they're lighter, freer, clearer. Because what you're doing is you're, you're accepting that things have happened in your past, but that you are not your past. Uh, so this connects to kind of how you felt as a literal different person at 30 because you left all your past behind at the door, so to say. Yeah. Gotcha. I would say that Landmark, um, and I'm going to definitely try and dumb down what you just said, uh, <laughs> or what you've just been saying, is that it's uh, it's a tool, right? But what kind of tool is it? It's a language tool. It's a language tool for one how you speak, two, how you think about yourself, and three, you can't really leave your past at the door, right? It's a nice way, it's a nice metaphor of saying like, I'm letting go, but what it really allows you to do is it lets you 
reevaluate how you were being with your past, right? So you bring your past with you and you learn from your experiences, but then you get to reevaluate how you've been approaching that. And I would think of it in the most simplest terms as a very mindful thing. It brings you into, this is what I am now. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm thinking. And I can change that on my own accord and I can choose to think something differently. Now, by the way, this is also not a sales pitch for Landmark. <laughs> I want to make that very clear. You took it though, right? I you did. Were, you were in the form. Yeah, there's, as uh, Stephanie was saying, there's many, many different types um, of courses that you can take. I've taken the first one, uh, which was a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then a Tuesday uh, final session where you can invite people. And I would like to take the next courses but it's not a priority right now. And it's not something that I am making the time for because there are other things that I want to handle. There are other things that I want to accomplish. And if I had more time, I would be taking them already. Um, but again, it's not a priority. And so I'm not setting it as one. But the, the tools that I walked away with, right, uh, was one of the things that became so prevalent was that I didn't have my priorities in general set up properly. And when I say properly, it's not a right or a wrong. It's more of a, oh, wow, like I thought that was so important. It's really not important at all. I should stop it. And I did. I stopped a lot of different things. Um, so what you're saying is your priorities weren't set up properly for what you wanted to accomplish right. in life. Right. So you you get connected to your commitments in the Landmark Forum. Right. And what you really care about. And this is why it's so hard to explain people's experiences in Landmark because it goes off of whatever you care about. Mm -hmm. So Totally some, subjective. It's totally subjective. Yeah, yeah. So somebody could take the forum and say, oh my God, this is great. You should do this. Your relationships will get you know, so much easier and you'll be able to talk to guys and or talk to girls and and somebody else could take it and be like, no, I made a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I connected my my friendships back. So right. it's so, very subjective. Yeah. And uh, part of that subjectiveness is it's also what you're putting in, right? So if you go to the gym and you work out a lot, you are able to build up strength and you can accomplish whatever you're looking to accomplish in the gym, maybe your health uh, maybe your cardiovascular, like health in general, whatever it might be, um, or you have back injury and you're trying to help your body, you know, recover from it. This is like a mental workout, right? So you can take other mindful courses. You can go on retreats. This is just another one of those types of retreats where it's like a gym. It's a mental gym where you yeah. go in and you do exercises and you're walked through exercises by a coach. And you, if you put in, call it the work, Mm -hmm. then you get out something as well. Yeah, and it takes practice. So, like, I've done the Landmark Forum several times. Mm -hmm. So you're so you're still taking uh, classes from there? Um, or well, seminars? I just finished the Wisdom course. Yeah, I, I, so I've taken every course that Landmark offers Wow. at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I have coached uh, their leaders program, and I've led introductions to the Landmark Forum where um, – people can come in and, and find out in three hours in an introduction what it's really about. Okay, I see. And does this relate, you were telling me before the show that you were speaking at Madison Square Garden, was this related to the Landmark Forum or was this related to your current Oh no, job? that was Price Waterhouse Coopers. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Totally related to the job. <laughs> totally related but to the job. But you found that you it had... It was actually kind of fun, though. <laughs> it I'm, was a I'm fun... You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. It was... Um, so my company every year has a, sort of a celebration to uh, celebrate new promotees and partners um, and people who have been with the company five and ten and sometimes 40 years. So... Um, we had this celebration. We outgrew the Javits Center, so we moved over to Madison Square Garden in New York City. And I auditioned to be part of the entertainment. You um, auditioned? I, I auditioned, yeah. <laughs> I did not think that was part of an audition. You're, we're saying like you're somewhat of a senior level, like, yeah, just I'll do that. Sure, sure. <laughs> no, I auditioned to be in a band, um, <laughs> and we set up a PWC band. Wow. And it was uh, 13 people. It was a pretty large band. 
Um, but, you know, then again, we're all about diversity and inclusion. So sure. we need to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I ended up doing Hit Me With Your Best Shot. Oh, that's fun. On Madison Square Garden stage. Wow. Yeah. That's, so wait, I thought you were speaking. I didn't realize you actually performed on yeah. the stage. That's yeah, awesome. So you were singing? Oh, my God. That's so awesome. So awesome. Um, what I know this is a funny question. Is there was there like a horn section in the band? Thirteen people is a lot of people. Yeah, we had um, two keyboard um, players. We had three guitar players, a drummer, five singers, um, and we had a saxophone. Oh, and I'm forgetting the coolest part. We had a tabla player. A tab. I don't know what a tabla well, yeah, what is. is that? Honestly, I didn't either before <laughs> I met this guy. He's amazing. Uh, a tabla is. Kind of like a small version of a bongo. And it's a Middle Eastern instrument, um, probably about 12 inches long. And um, it's got this amazing sound that I couldn't even begin to describe. But I guess kind of like a small drum. But it was so interesting of a sound that it got its own microphone and we highlighted it and certain parts of the songs so it, was, it was really fun that sounds really cool so did you feel that you uh, before taking landmark form you may have not had the confidence to be able to go up on stage and do this event it's in a, front of how yeah, many people five thousand <laughs> standing room only um it's a good question so i performed before i took the landmark forum um so i had been comfortable with being on stage but yes, there was an element of fear every time I got on stage. And it was just always there. This time, it, I don't know if it, it wasn't that big of a deal to go. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go perform for my friends. Um, and it didn't really hit me until the sound check when I got up there and I, I looked out and I was like, this is this is a once in a lifetime experience and I can't believe I'm here. And it was more um, coming from gratefulness than it was coming from fear and, oh my God, I'm gonna you know, in, perform in front of all these people. Sure, I mean, that is so amazing to be up there. I just, I wanna get back a little bit to the landmark thing yeah. I was reading. Because I just did a little bit of research about the forum and I was because I was just interested in it after having my experience and knowing that we were going to have somebody on here. And I read about one thing that you guys do there and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Please do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of called that. It's I don't know if you guys in the forum call it this, but it's supposed to be ego death where you're supposed to kind of kill your ego while you're in the form and it sounded like something you were telling me when the person was telling their experiences on a stage and other people were giving them suggestions or telling them about their past or, or telling them about what they were doing wrong maybe is that kind of what's going down like mm -hmm. you, people are telling you advice but it could be in a way that could be almost negative sometimes i, I mean i i personally didn't have that experience so. like what was i have a definition for ego death yeah. just because yeah. i didn't know what it is either ego death is a complete loss of subjective self-identity the term is used in various intertwined contexts uh, so i guess it can mean multiple things with related meanings in Jungian uh, psychology, uh, Paul Jung, Jungian, whatever, um, excuse me, the synonymous term uh, psychic death is used, which refers to a fundamental transformation of the psyche. <laughs> Just looking up something else. Okay. So there's another term in Landmark called rackets. Yes. Yes. Can you explain that to me a little bit? Uh, exactly so what that means. <laughs> if you are not in the Landmark Forum, you do not have rackets. What? <laughs> so rackets um, are... Again, this is a, a verbal tool, right? These are, yeah. it's a language tool. So in order to get to rackets, which is a word, yeah. and now we'll provide you with a definition, or you have to have the tools to get there, right? You can't know what psychosis is unless you understand what psyche is. The right? Landmark Forum's sure. all made up. Well, yeah, everything's made up. Like it's it's just it's all made up. So these words are made up for the purpose of having a particular conversation that is an unusual conversation. People don't normally sit in a room and talk about what's important to them. They just don't do it. Sure. And it the the the, the way in which landmark is set up pulls from different ideals that have been around. Some of them have been around for thousands of years. So it's not like it's something new, 
But the compilation of how they put these ideals together in, in one program, in one room, that it can make such a profound effect on you in three and a half days, you know, three days in an evening, um, that's, the, that's the specialness of Landmark. So, I mean, we could dissect all of the terms and the things that are used, but really the, the, result of, the, the result that people feel coming out of the forum, you know, the freedom and self-expression and peace of mind, sure. that's, that's the result of, of having the experience, being in the experience. And I'm all for that. I just, when I read about the racket system, it sounded, it was a little weird to me because mm -hmm. it sounded like they were teaching people, it was related to teaching people that they're always the innocent person in their story and it's kind of the people around you that are doing something wrong. And that's what made me oh, think no. of my friend. It's actually Leo. the opposite of that. <laughs> so that, that's why I wanted you oh, to explain okay. it to me because I'm that's, clearly not understanding it. That's great. So. No. Uh, that, so again, that's why I say only people in the Landmark Forum have rackets. And it's said several times when you take the Landmark Forum, when you leave this room, no one else has rackets. <laughs> but human beings are going to do different things with communications and we're going to listen to what we want to listen to and make it mean whatever we want to make it mean. Sure. Um, but really rackets are constant complaints. Okay. And right? that means? You have a constant complaint. You're, you're constantly um, like ups in, upset like with this or complaining about this or, you know, and really the point is to turn in the fingers and say, okay, why am I having this constant complaint? And then looking at what can you do about it? Okay. Maybe give it up. <laughs> so what's like an example of, can I ask you if yeah. a personal like racket of yours that you, you that you went through and gave up? Yeah, I mean, my mom is a perfect example of, of uh, a racket I had. You know, I had her, everything was her fault. I mean, even if it wasn't, it was her fault. Most of it was not her fault, but everything just got blamed on her. Um, when I was able to take responsibility for my own choices, my own actions, even when she tried to take back the responsibility and say, no, that one was really my fault, I'm like, no, it wasn't. Because if I had changed my mind and did, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z, it would have been, the responsibility would have been over here. So that's really taking responsibility for your own rackets. It's not like, oh, you're a racketeer. <laughs> right. Okay. So that, that sounds like a great thing. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that when I was in my Landmark Forum, one of the things that they said was um, people call Landmark a cult, right? There are lots of people who have taken the forum and say, this is great. I've learned so much. And then they try and, so to speak, spread the word, right, to share it with <laughs> others. And depending upon everyone's own opinion and how they live their life, maybe the way that they share it with others is not, call it productive, okay, yeah. for sharing a tool. It's a mental tool. So when people call it a cult, I disagree because it's not – a cult take you away and they bring mm. you towards an idea and they say, this is what you should believe in and forget everything else. And Mark kind of pushes you back and says, go into your life again and look again at what you're doing and, and be in your life. Be there with what's happening. And, and like you were saying, take responsibility for your life and, and live it to the fullest that you want. Well, what I found was interesting you know, while I was doing my research is that Landmark is literally banned in France and Belgium because it's considered a cult. Like, I don't understand how something that's... So you guys are saying so not can be so perceived as it to the point of literally being banned from two countries. And the, apparently there was like a French documentary made where somebody came into the landmark form and it like was very revealing. And that's why this ended up happening and they ended up getting kicked out of the country. And just the whole thing was and after that, it, this reminded me very much of almost Scientology where they got very litigious with the people who were creating the documentary and they were sending subpoenas out to all these companies that were distributing this. Mm -hmm. And why does a company, I, you know, but, but I, I was going to ask these questions, but I feel like you're just not like the, the right person to ask. Cause no, I'm definitely not. How would you know? How would you, you know? So I didn't want to get too but, into but this. But I also, I, like I want to address that. That's, it, it's, it's a valid concern. Um, perfect case um, of media and, and consumption of media is 
the whole presidential um, news coverage, media coverage, right? So there's fake stuff about Trump, I'm sure. There's fake stuff about Hillary, I'm sure. I'm the first one who will agree with you that the media is terrible and everybody's biased. So I would just just, um, be aware that anything that you are researching about, you know, France and Belgium and it's media. It's media coverage. So anytime you have media coverage, you have the ability to twist the truth. Sure. Um, one thing that I can say about cults is that they, like Kyle said, they try and take you away from people in your life. They try to um, – uh, Well, my experience, that's control, all. It's like control, what happens, yes, you know? Yeah. I, and I totally get that yeah. that you could connect the two. Right. Really what Landmark stands for is the you know one of the first – homework or assignments that they give you is go go call somebody that you don't talk to you know call somebody that you don't connect with anymore and but is that to and take responsibility to the no to take responsibility the the to take responsibility of that you know whatever you need to take responsibility for it's really a program that's um based on whatever it is you care about and that's that's unbelievable and like a great thing but at the end of the day it feels like you're you're reaching out to these people and then you're asking them to join the forum right and to join the forum you have to pay money and from my experience to join the forum you come to you you first see them at their graduation because that's Mm -hmm. like that's things so it seems like these graduations are almost like what are you getting out of the graduation and it's a a completion right that's why so it's very easily yeah chime in it, it's easily confused with a graduation, but it is a completion. I, he, I know my friend just referred to it as graduation. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah, refer yeah. to it as graduation, That's too. That's what I just yeah. said. Uh, when I did my Landmark Forum, it was like a year ago. I did it in around this time, maybe July or something. And You also had asked me to join as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> I did. And here's uh, going off of what both of you just said. So, right, call people that you don't normally call. I wrote a letter to uh, one of my friends, and I wrote a letter, and I apologize to them for the position that I put them in in my head and how our relationship worked. So in the call or in the letter that I wrote, it wasn't a solicitation. It was, I'm I'm trying to take ownership of my relationship with you. When it comes to, right, because at the, at the final session, graduation, whatever we're going to describe it as, when you're bringing someone in, it's it's because you want them to use the tool that you now have. It's like, sure, I, get I just that. learned this great bicep workout. Dude, let's go to the gym and let me show you. Yeah, or That's, I just saw this great movie. Right. Or went to this great restaurant. Right. Hey, but let's come. not let's not also but forget we don't, that we don't we don't um we don't look at it like solicitation when somebody says, Hey, I just saw the Avengers. You should totally go see it. It's amazing. Right. People don't go, wait, why are you inviting me to the movies? No, right. 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 Why should why should I see the Avengers? Wait, what's it about? Why well, <laughs> like, well, I think don't people are naturally like can get a little defensive when it comes yeah. to being told that they're to go to a self help thing or something. Right. Something That's like exactly landmark. what it is. And I we get that. And know? we can't forget that landmark as a whole is a business. Yeah. It is a business. And so they do have soliciting in some ways. They do tell you like Go bring your friends because one, your friends will learn and they will. And two, we also get more money. Like that is how businesses work. They want people, especially if they're a coaching type of deal, right? Or meditation retreats. Go tell your friends about this meditation retreat because it was awesome. You had a great time and you'll bring them in and we'll make money again. We can't forget it's it's a business. But it's also the fact that now that you have these new tools, right, you're going to go out into a world, you're going to use these tools, and everybody else around you, or for the most part, are not going to have these transformation tools. So you're going to be operating as a transformed human being in an untransformed world. So another reason that, you know, it's go share with people, mm-hmm. go share with people and tell them what you experienced. And if they like it, if they are into interested, then they can have the tools too. And then you have different kinds of conversations. I know Kyle and I have different conversations as cousins, and then we have an elevated conversation as two Landmark graduates. Hmm. And and your Using mom- Using the language. Yeah, your mom and I, we have a completely different language together now that we have the tools and the language that we learned, the communication skills that we learned at Landmark. 
much. I, I I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and you know what? I'll I'll say that I, I also like when I say that it feels like solicitating and that it's it's all wrapping back to my own personal experience where I had you know what I explained to you with this yeah. woman. So can you kind of see in my head how I'm like totally. you know it feels like okay they're just looking for money you know totally. and I get and I'm sure that there is a message of making and as you've explained there's got to be a, yeah. a good otherwise the business of, wouldn't work. Of, I understand that yeah, it's a business yeah. you know it's just like it's very expensive. I know Leo spent thousands of dollars there and it just seems like a lot of money. I don't know. And yeah. then you're asking your family to come and your friends. And then it's like, come for my completion process, but it's my completion. Yet we also want to make sure that maybe you want to join or not. You, yeah. you know how that can seem from the outside. And I, I know that I'm not the only, like I've, when I was reading about this online, mm -hmm. it, people had similar things to yeah. say that they were just leaving with a kind of a bad taste in their mouth because they seemed like the money was the most important thing in the whole situation yeah and it shouldn't be and it's not D can I ask you did anybody ask you what you might want to get out of it um I, they may have I don't remember specifically but listen I, I understand why Kyle may have asked me or why Leo mm -hmm. may have asked I've got my own mental problems you know like I understand oh, not, no, no, no. not saying not, that so you guys have mental problems nothing wrong with you no no um, I, I um, wasn't offended by your some, question like some that. people take the landmark forum because not that there's something wrong but because there's something they want and until there's something that you want, and I mean, you want it like you want air. Mm -hmm. Like I know I wanted a relationship, like I wanted to breathe. I wanted to be in that magic. I would have done anything. And so for me, you know, the cost of the Landmark Forum, I was like, yeah, if it works, 100%, I'll do it. Sure. Right, so it, there's gotta be that thing that you want so like maybe you I didn't have breathe. that drive to yeah, And to you might not. Thing. Yeah. Which isn't why Landmark isn't for everyone. But when you want that thing, like you want air. But how about the side of the coin where it's like finding somebody who wants something like they want air and then kind of breaking them down and see, it's almost it almost seems manipulative on the other side of the coin where it's like, I know this is the one thing you want. Mm. And the only thing that could help you get this is this form. It's not the only thing, but it's kind of like if you want a burger, I'm not going to tell you to go to a grocery store. Like if you want a burger, I'm going to tell you go to McDonald's, go to Burger King. Right. You know, like that's where you get a burger. Go to Shake Shack. Go get a burger. Right. So Landmark does transformation and they do transformation well. So if you want transformation and you want, you know, Freedom, full self-expression, peace of mind. You want that? Go to Landmark. But I agree with you. Sometimes it's not. It's not always shared in the way that people can hear it. Which is like, hey, you might not want transformation, but if you do, here's where it is. Let me know when you feel like getting it. Right? Which is a much more comfortable conversation than like, oh my God, you should do this thing. And and people, people say, people invite their friends and family because they're excited. Right. They no, just got I, these amazing tools and, and the amazing results and they don't know how to put it into language. And so sometimes it gets a little muddied, the invitations, and, you, and, and it could show up as solicitation. I appreciate you saying that. Do, yeah. do you think, are you personally still feeling like, I, now you have to be over like the initial hype of the landmark. Do you still feel like, I, mean, I know that. Yeah, I took good, it seven years ago. <laughs> right. So do you feel like you're still telling people 100%. To try to join? Yeah. Okay. Um, so. And in what way do you do it? Uh, so let's see. You're, Kyle, your mom took it when? Um, she took it. Two years it ago? Probably. Well, I took it 2017. She may have taken it 2000. Early 2017, maybe 2016. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, so that was a result of a conversation that his mom and I had. Um, and it was like, when you want that thing like you want air, okay, this is where, this is where you're going to do, you know, where you're going to go. Um, and we had been having that conversation for, I want to say, like three or four years before she actually said, okay, I'm ready. Um, and just being with her and saying, it's okay when you're ready. It's okay when you're not ready. And, and I'll still love you whether you do it or not do it. Like, there's no judgment here. Um, and just recently, my coworker 
registered for the forum. And then my other coworker that I had a conversation with said, oh, by the way, I heard that our coworkers is going to do the forum. So I'm going to do it too. I'm saving up. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, I, I still, and, and my coworker's taking it in August oh, cool. this year. So um, a lot of, a lot of um, transformational conversations come up around me because that's what I like to have is transformational conversations. But there are people that I interact with at my job that don't even know that I've done the Landmark Forum. Mm. And it's because I'm not boisterous about it. You know, if you ask me, what is it? My coworker said to me, what is it that has you just like, you operate at work like nothing bothers you. You're always happy. You just, you you take things on the chin. Like, how do you do that? And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> you brought it up, so I'm going to tell you how to get it. It's like the burger, you know, right. at McDonald's. Um, but there are people that that doesn't come up with. And, you know, Landmark might be right for them, but it also might not be. So we don't have to stick directly on Landmark the entire time. I just wanted to know what you're up to today. You said you were doing life coaching as well on the side. So, um. Nah, not really. Not uh, exactly. I mean, it's I, it's I, more of just coaching, coaching and str strategy, right? Yeah, it's co it's coaching and strategy at my job, um, at, you know, Pricewaterhouse. Oh, so it is at your job still. Yeah, I mean, so my um, official title is client strategist, but I deal with a lot of teams where I deal with project management. And so you kind of need coaching skills in that. And I, and I think I do make it a little bit more on the coaching side than um, some of my colleagues. Would you say that there are, or can you give us a couple of key things that you tell your uh, teams that you work with that they need to know in order to function? What would be something that you could share with the audience that is like uh, essential for a team to work cohesively? I think that's really tough. I think it all depends on the team. Um, so listen, listen to people really hear what people are saying, not what you feel about what they're saying, not what you think they're saying, but what they're actually saying. Because a lot of times human beings will interpret, will judge, will assess what people are saying and then it's your opinion about what they're saying. You know, my, my boyfriend hurt my feelings. No, he didn't hurt your feelings. He said something. Right? So in teams, working in teams, you have to listen to each other and what people are saying and maybe take a breath, not respond right away. But again, it's, it's all going to depend on the teams that you're working with. Okay. What would be some advice that you would give to an aspiring artist or hairstylist or someone that <laughs> wants to go into strategy? What would be a, a route or an avenue that you would suggest? Get as much training and schooling as you possibly can. It's it's amazing. I, I, one of my regrets is that I didn't get as much schooling and training as as um, as I would have liked. And um, all I wanted to do was work. All I wanted to do was, you know, start at the top. Um, even as a hairdresser, I never wanted to shampoo. <laughs> I never wanted to assist. I like I just want to cut hair. Well, you can't cut hair. You have to start somewhere. So um, be okay with starting at the bottom of the totem pole and working your way up because I'm now working my way up from the very bottom of the totem pole. Um, and it feels good to learn from people. Right. Okay, whether they're above you or below you, right? Yeah, exactly. Steffi, thank you so much again for coming on. Uh, if anyone wanted to reach out to you, if any of our audience, do you have an email that they could reach out to you by or maybe like social media? Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciated being here and, you know, talking to you guys. This was great. Um, yeah, I'm on social media. Stephanie Eisner, you can look me up. Um, I have an Insta. I'm a little bit old. <laughs> but right. m actually, my dog has an Insta. Oh. That one's that one's way cooler. <laughs> there you go. You can He's, shout out your dog. Yeah, I'm going to shout out my dog. His his IG is <laughs> <I'm> so old. <laughs> brisket underscore face underscore. Brisket face. I love it. He's the best. <laughs>
Well, uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode on the Disconnection Podcast, where we aim to inform, inspire, and close the disconnections in your life. We'd like to thank our guests today for joining us and delivering a unique perspective on a range of topics. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, the podcast app. And I've been Kyle. And I've been Ben. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Disconnection.